Hi, Renee here. The cumbersome sessions of auditioning in the high-end shop are over. The winner has already been presented on this channel. Today, I would like to give you an impression of how my top dog sounds here in my own home. You know the phenomenon, dazzling in the studio, but disappointing at home. Luckily, this was not the case. From the very beginning, I felt like that farmer from the lost village of the valley who hasn't heard but the small organ in his village church, and then he comes to the capital for the first time in his life, goes to the cathedral, and is overwhelmed by the sound of the majestic organ there. The amp has an air of invincibility which reminds me of those notorious Shaolin monks who make their enemies swirl through the air with a single twist of their index finger. I was moved to tears. No, that would be grossly exaggerated. But I have to confess that during the first weeks, I often was shaking my head in disbelief, murmuring, incredible, this amp is just incredible. And then I timidly looked around to make sure that nobody was watching me who could have taken me for a dementia sufferer who keeps smiling about all those beautiful things some angels might have sung into his aging ears. Like a deeply satisfied conductor or sound engineer, I kept thinking, that's what I was after, that's what I have been chasing for. Have you ever had this experience? If not, here are some symptoms which can indicate this kind of satisfaction, which some people call the high-end nirvana, although in my opinion this step of the ladder is only reached by a happy few. Many tracks I had already become tired of, acquired a new fascination and became attractive again. The objection, this part of the song spoils the pleasure of listening to it, turned into, not my favorite part, but not so bad after all. I never had the impression parts of a recording were too low-key or too high-key. In spite of a rising density of details, both in the highs and the lows, the music remained relaxing, not a trace of listening fatigue. Quite on the contrary, most of the music became more addictive. Pressing the stop button turned into a no-no action. Because I felt it would be sacrilegious, to interrupt something so beautiful. Even more than that, I often wished the songs should be longer than they were, because I enjoyed them so much that I hated to be deprived of the pleasure so quickly. And most notably, so far I have not found a single CD which did not sound better, some only a little bit, most of them considerably better. At least, in some respects, many of them experienced an overall upgrade. Female voices sounded like coming from the finest tube amplifiers out there, not from an allegedly sterile transistor. The A300 even turned the rules upside down and with most recordings sounded sweeter than the Chady's tube monoblocks I had before. My devious route along all those tubed devices I had recently tried, the applause, the Cayenne, the Cephsius, the Chades, turned out to be love's labor lost, not to speak of the money I had wasted, to no avail. Well, there were some respects where they excelled, but overall, this beast gave me more than all the others together could provide. Imagine a bag of espresso beans which has not been closed very carefully. That's the sound of my bells amplifiers, quite nice but with sour and bitter components as most transistor amps offer. 
Next, you open a bag of chemically enriched coffee, for example, with Christmas or Christmas fruit cake flavor. Some coffee drinkers prefer this taste to that of natural beans or prefer the sound of a Chady's amp. Finally, you poke your nose into the smell of freshly roasted beans. Now you have the scent the Plinius can unleash. I deliberately did not say the smell of the Plinius because it does not add anything to the recorded music. The A300 breaks loose previously concealed, imprisoned traits. That's something totally different. The Cefsiu gave me a first idea of those hidden powers. It opened the bottle, let me smell at it, and all too quickly corked it up again. <coughs> too fast to get intoxicated, but it left back an ardent longing to get that pleasure again, and when I met the Plinius, there it was. I had thought only wickedly expensive tube amps were able to offer it, and I was pretty frustrated, I must confess. Having got a glimpse of that Nirvana sound, and then having to abstain from it, was hard to take. What made me even more desperate was the fact that I had no idea where to look for the needle in the haystack. For those who have not watched this previous video, I reposed some seconds of it here because they express the truth so appropriately that I could not word it any better. The pearls were sent, the JA-30 could not properly translate them. But the Plinius, on the contrary, says, that was great, but don't you have something more difficult? My limits are not maxed out yet. But I accept also delicate jewelry and make it sparkle and shine. When I feel like partying hard, I do not press this button and listen in AB mode, which is a bit rough, but the bass is fit to kill all the flies in the room. A good example of the low-end power the A300 can break free is this old Gotan Project CD. In Class A mode, it delivers great tango music, and in AB, it upgrades to an overkill tango machine and rocks the room. I said it rocks the room, it does not blow the bass up like the JA-30. <coughs> then I decided to listen again to all my recently used jazz trio tracks with the Plinius and let the hellhounds loose. Yago, for example, steel hard bass line, the piano strings tighter than ever, singing in the highs and forbiddingly vibrating in the lower registers. With pianos, the JA30 sometimes did not get along so well. They were standing on the stage like a bookshelf, 10 inches deep and overstuffed blocking the view of the other musicians. The Plinius projected a piano which sounded like a giant, but allowed you to see the drums and the bass player as well. I also tried Day In Day Out by the Swiss artist Beat Kassley in the last hope to get a continuous bass line and finally, and for the first time, I really did. Generally, the synthetic shady space is now replaced by a variety of very interesting styles. 
jumping base, hopping base, pushing base, rocking base, subdued base, groping and creaking base, tiggy base, snarling and grunting base, light-footed base, blues-heavy base, pulled and damped base, jazz-inspired bass, and so on. But the lower registers are only one slice of the cake, so let's concentrate on some other criteria. When Nicky Parrott asks me, with the help of the Plinius as a marriage broker, will you give me all your love? I would like to hug her and kiss her lips, which I believe to see clearly. I mean, the lips at that time when the recording was made in 2015. She was born in 1970. Now she's over 50 already. Listening to Noon's interpretation of 500 Miles, I'm tempted to say I can see the whole person on the stage and even perceive how her breath hits the mirror-polished microphone. I know sound alone cannot achieve that, but it's nice when you can say that mere listening incites such impressions. The bass solo is more unobtrusive now. Beautifully balanced with the sound of the piano and the singer, although the Plinius had the power to showcase the bass, it disdains boasting of it. I also like the scale ratio of piano on the left, quite naturally occupying the majority of the space, still leaving ample room for the singer, whose voice never mingles with tones of the piano, but it is full and rounded, not just the voice of a flat cardboard figure. Eva Cassidy unfortunately left us aged only 33 in the year 1996, but nevertheless she was able to record the CD I Can Only Be Me with the London Symphony Orchestra in 2023, 27 years later. Digital scanning made it possible to isolate her voice from the old accompaniment and to fill it into the orchestral presentation absolutely seamlessly. The LSO blasts the dimensions of my spacious listening room and fills every inch with sound. The most beautiful tracks on the CD are, at least for me, Autumn Leaves, You've Changed, and tall trees in Georgia. Smile by Gregory Porter is another piece that can reveal the limitations of a setup. The power of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra musicians bulges the walls outwards, but the layers both vertically and horizontally are kept apart by the A300 so cleanly that the ever-increasing volume does not hurt the most delicate cilia in my ear. In your imagination you can freely move between the instruments and around the singer. There is more flesh and muscles to everything so that the outlines are never obscured. Fearless is not only the title of a song by Taylor Swift, it is also a very attractive word in the commercial psychology market, like fearless driving or fearless at work. So far, only a book about fearless listening is missing, but in case it should ever be published, I will not buy it, because this has already become a reality for me. I had only made a bad choice in the beginning. In fact, I was free to pick from a tremendous variety of brands, but 
Just like in real life, you can easily go wrong. And just like this gentleman here, I was fooled by a French lady who, after the honeymoon, immediately dropped her silver golden mask, asked for repairs, and showed all her weaknesses. The way to my new marriage started in the same famous high-end bar in Bangkok. After trying a few of the girls there, I made a much more reasonable decision and started a new life. I'm afraid, however, my divorced old flame is hiding in one of the most hidden rooms of the... And when enough grass has grown to cover the painful memories, she will look for a new victim. Therefore, you are well advised to be on the alert. She will strike again. Stay safe and healthy to watch my next video soon. Cheers!